Hello and welcome to the One Man Band Podcast. My name is Mark Browner, I'm your host, and with me is the One Man Band himself, filmmaker, J.R. Rodriguez. Hey, J.R. And welcome to the One Man Band. So, um, the podcast is going to be basically uh, a weekly conversation that we're going to have and we're going to update. Um, you know, uh, I don't know what to call the viewers. Yeah, uh, the viewers. Hopefully, a lot of the viewers are going to be my Patreons. Um, and um, we're going to talk about that, the Patreon page on, the, on this podcast. We're going to talk about The Shot, which is another show that I'm looking to raise money to produce. Um, and I'm going to talk about myself, like... Who I am, where I came from, how I ended up here, and, you know, we're going to talk about this studio. We're at the Channel Austin right now, you know, supposedly where Robert cut together his famous El Mariachi movie. Oh, I know. didn't know that. Yeah, so we're probably, you know, in the, in the place where uh, that movie was cut together, and hopefully he made history there, and... With this show, we're going to probably make some history here because uh, Robert Rodriguez is a big reason why I moved here. It's a big reason why I became uh, a filmmaker. And so, a lot of things to cover. Yeah. Uh, so, um, you're originally from Philly. Yeah, let's let's touch on that. How okay. I'm, I'm originally from Philadelphia, born and raised... Um, I was inspired to start shooting movies by Robert Rodriguez. Uh, He made this movie called El Mariachi. And um, I remember when I saw the news of him winning the, I think he won the Audience Award at Sundance. Hmm. And they showed a picture of him. They showed a little clip from his movie. And it was... It was very impressive, but it looked like something that was done by, you know, an amateur, you know? Right. But it looked right. professional, but you could tell it was, you know, a really low, low budget movie. Okay. And he had a picture with himself with this digital camera at the time, or a, it was a Canon high camera. And I remember when I saw that, I got the impression, oh, that's what he shot it with. And... Right, but it was actually shot, what, in 16 millimeter? Is that right? Uh, uh, exactly. Movie film? Yeah, it was uh-huh. shot in 16 millimeter. Um, the, the camera, he borrowed the camera. He, uh, he wrote a book mariachi. about that whole experience of shooting that movie called Rebel Without a Crew. That was actually the first book I ever read. All right. Um, so you said you were shooting your own, like, little uh, short films in Philadelphia. Yeah. What what what, uh, what what kind of camera were you using at the time? So uh, the first short movie that I shot in Philadelphia was called La Vibra, and that was a project that my sister needed to do for college. It was a college project, and she needed oh. to take a Spanish poem mm-hmm. and convert it into a video. Is that the name of the poem? La, La, La Vibra. Vibra. Uh-huh. So it was a project. Your sister was working on in school, but, yeah. but you shot some video f- for her? So she wanted me to help her with this. Uh-huh. And um, at the time, my wife was pregnant with my first daughter. Oh. And I didn't have a lot of contact with my sister and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so she just went out there and started shooting it. Hmm. And luckily, you know, I happened to be driving by my grandmother's house where she was shooting it okay. that day when I saw her it like hit me like oh that's the that's what she had been asking me to help her with so I, uh, I jumped right in and took over the camera for her so she borrowed the camera from my dad my dad had one of those first cameras that has the camera and the VCR separate and connected through like an umbilical cord. Oh, wow. Okay. You know, we're talking 
yeah. Panasonic. Er it was early nice. technology. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was nice. Let me tell you, this thing was like perfect for making movies, and okay. I think that's why my dad bought it. My dad wanted to start making movies, but mm -hmm. he just never did it. He never mm. got around to doing it. But he bought the nice equipment yeah. for the time. Yeah. yeah. And like, like VCRs were new at that time, you know. So uh -huh. to have one that was portable. You know, right with yeah. a camera yeah was amazing and so my sister was able to borrow the camera from my dad to shoot her little short film wow was Mind that, you, was that, i used to ask my dad to let me mm -hmm. borrow the camera many times yeah you know so yeah. i could go and right. shoot something but he would always tell me no because he was afraid i would mess it up or break it because it was okay so he always turned you down but was your sister older than you no Okay, she but was because gonna... I guess it was for a college project, you know. Oh, okay. She right. never asked him for anything before. He was no. like, "Oh," and so we shot the whole thing, obviously linear, and yeah, um, yeah. I had to figure out how to like record, pause, you know, turn the camera off, right. and I realized when I did that, the camera would roll forward a little bit, and so if you started to record right from there, it would leave a glitch. Mm -hmm. So. I, w I learned that I had to like back it up play a pause bit. back it up a little bit <laughs> and so right. we did this the whole day we shot this thing with our siblings you know mm -hmm. she narrated you know off camera oh, wow. other, another person held uh, a radio and was queued up to a tape for the sound you know so we we, we, did a, we made a nice nice video yeah that's it's very old one of the first things I ever did and that's at the cool. end of the night Huh. when we actually played the take back and it actually looked like a, a short film wow I'm we all like rejoice and cheer like, <laughs> like we did it yeah we won a war or something you know <laughs> right no that's awesome yeah so that was like the first time and that's when that? i realized like uh -huh. i i can do this this is something that it came very natural to me Okay. And um and ask how old were you when you worked on that project with your sister? Oh, when I worked on that project with my sister, I would say I was about uh, 19. Okay. Would that be right, babe? Yeah. Young guy. I was about 19 years old and we did that. So Okay. Um so you Okay. So you're saying there was there's a gap in time between when you did that and when you did your your next video project or short film yeah okay and um so i decided that i needed to buy a camera because my dad was not um sharing his camera with me anyway uh he was always afraid i was going to mess up his camera okay and he would use the camera as a deck to play movies and watch movies Right. Like he loved watching old uh, westerns or Charles Bronson movies, you know. Oh, was it a, a so he used it? He, he it used a VHS deck. deck. Yeah, because it's oh, okay. a small portable deck, and I mean, right. really compact for the time. For the time, you know? yeah. And so had remote and everything. It was pretty badass. Um, so yeah. he did not want to let go of the camera, and so I uh, I decided I needed to get my own camera. Yeah, so. I was involved in a lot of things I shouldn't have been involved in at that time, you know. Okay. I was living a life that I shouldn't have been living. And so that was very distracting in in that way. Um, so when I saw the camera that Robert took a picture with in the news clip that I saw, mm -hmm. it was this Canon camera. I found out later it was actually you know, a 16 millimeter camera. but. I was convinced that was the camera, so I convinced my mom, who had really good credit, uh -huh. to go ahead and uh, get me the camera, and I would pay the camera off, you know, whatever. So, so it was a Canon, uh, like a, was it a high 8 or? It was a nasty camera with an interchangeable lens and oh. had amazing depth of view. And just, I knew cool. nothing about cameras, Mark, nothing, oh, you know? Okay. But when people saw me with this camera around my neck, you know, they're like, oh, this guy must be a professional. Okay. You know? So was it, camera, a, was it was it VHS or was it the smaller? No, it, it was like, um, uh, a high eight tape. Okay, high eight. Yeah. High eight tape and um, yeah, it shot beautiful video 
It had great depth of field because it had professional lenses on it. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it started so off with a pretty decent camera, camera for, the, for the time. Yeah. That camera helped open a lot of doors. When I went to people and I approached them about, oh, can I use your location? I want to shoot this little scene for a movie. And they saw the camera. They were like, oh, really? Buddy, <laughs> you're carrying down. it around with you. Huh? <laughs> like, Hey man, look, I got good Mommy, equipment I had here. that camera always with me 24-7. Wow. So, yeah, okay. I mean, the camera was, you know, it, it was, uh, it impressed people. It was your so, calling card. <laughs> yeah, so if I wanted to talk to somebody and convince them to let me use their place, yeah, I'd walk up to them with a the thing wrapped around my neck, <laughs> and, right. and I was prepared to go and get some test shots, you know? Oh, okay. That would be the okay. reason why. You know, right. if you don't mind, I like to get some test shots and see if you're okay with me shooting at your location. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Like so it. yeah, okay. so then I start um, shooting music videos for uh, this uh, rapper who I knew as a kid. We went to school together from the neighborhood, hmm. and they were like a one-hit wonder. They had like one really big hit that. And you know, all his other songs. Oh, a national so much. national hit or a local? Yeah, hip hop. It was a hip hop song. Uh -huh. It really took off, like nationally. Like they even traveled around the world with this, you know, wow. on the strength of this one song. And so. Who is uh, the rapper, if you, if you don't mind saying? His, the, his name is called, his name is Ice Dog. That's uh -huh. his uh, rapper name. Okay. And the group that he was with that, you know, it's a one hit wonder was Tough Crew. Uh -huh. And so they broke up and they got screwed over by their manager, that old story. Okay. You know, and so then he went solo. He tried to make a comeback on a solo tip. Okay. So that's when we met up. And uh, yeah, he had nothing. He was starting again from nothing other than his reputation that he had built. And so I just bought this camera, I had no experience, never shot a video. And I offered to do a music video for him, with no experience. Wow. Obviously, I didn't charge him, you know, I did it for free. And this is when music videos were starting to really become real popular. MTV, you know, um, Michael Jackson, uh, when he came out with those series of, you know, uh, Billie Jean, um, mm -hmm. uh, Beat It, um, Thriller, right. took it to a whole other level. So Okay. One guy that was very uh, uh, helpful in me making these short films was a guy named Benny, Benny Baez, and he was uh, used to be a professional boxer. Uh, he's most famous for his first round knockout by Sweet Pea Whitaker. Huh. Um, How did you uh, hook up with him? Was he... The way I ho hooked up with him was where I worked with my dad in the auto parts store mm -hmm. um, down the street. There was a little video store, like a neighborhood video store, not like a blockbuster or anything. Just right. Just probably was more of a front than anything. Okay. You know? <laughs> but I would frequent this place and get movies from my dad and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And so um, the kid that ran it, his name was Chavito, and we became really good friends. And... This kid, he wanted to be famous, you know? All right. For whatever. Either he'd okay. be famous for being a drug dealer, famous for... <laughs> one way know, or another. One way or another, he wanted to be famous. So okay. when I told him I was making movies, he wanted to be in my movie, so I put him in my music videos. And so... Oh, okay, okay. So I met Benny through him. All right. Benny would go to this place and rent movies, too. Hmm. So when I met Benny... You know, he was also another person that was eager to be in any project that I was working on. Okay, and so, so he, he wanted to be talent in, you know, in front of the camera? Who? Or he wanted the, the Benny guy? Well, Benny wanted to be like a, a, a star, you know? Okay. He wants to be the star, but he don't want to talk on camera. Okay. He didn't like the way his voice sounds. You know how Mike the... Tyson had kind of a funny sounding voice. He was always real self-conscious about his voice, how he sounds, and um, his pronu his English pronunciation. Okay. So, not that he had to speak in English. You know, in the movies, he could have just spoken Spanish. But right, you know, 
That's what subtitles are for. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I knew how to do that at the oh, time. Oh, well, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and so, right. yeah, so I made a couple movies. I think the first one was one that was just improvised, and Benny showed up at my place one day with a few guys, okay. and he wanted to direct uh, the, this little idea that he had. Okay. He wanted me to be, like, the cameraman, you know? Oh, all right, all right. So it's like, oh, wow, this guy's, you know, already jumping ahead of himself, right? He's, <laughs> yeah, he was being a little presumptuous. It was like, but I saw it, yeah, I saw it as it. an opportunity. Hey, let's go get some experience, you know? Okay, right. So we went to this one location on. where Come they on, had this um, monument built there mm -hmm. uh, out of stone. And it looked like at one point it had a spot there for a statue. Maybe a Jesus statue or a statue of Mary, uh -huh. you know, and you would come and... Or Rocky Balboa. Hmm? <laughs> this is by a church. It's okay. up in the okay. Northeast, and right. it's been abandoned. You know, the church is abandoned, and this little area is, like, in the woods. So there's a lot of graffiti on it and stuff. And so the, oh. the, the rumors That's about this one yeah. place is that the KKK used to come there, and they used to lynch, you know... Uh, young black people there. Really? You know, this is what the rumors were about this area. In Philadelphia? In Philadelphia. Wow. I had no idea. Okay. Yeah, so... Didn't know they had a presence. And so... Northeast. The movie he wanted to do was basically a ripoff of uh, Friday the 13th. Oh, okay. You know, a psycho guy escapes, a, you know, a psycho ward, and he's right. going around killing people, you know? Like Jason? Like Jason, you know? Okay, okay. <laughs> Literally, like with a machete and he had like the ski mask on, you know? Okay, well. This was his idea, right? So I'm like, okay, um, you know, let's run with it. Let's see what he's got, right? I mean, this, if we're talking about the late 80s still, I mean, that's, you know, that, that was, was hot. The, that was, that was the height of the, uh, you know, the slasher films, you know? Yeah. So he um, thought he had it all figured out. Mm-hmm. We get out to this location, so he thought it out that much. Okay. When we actually had to start shooting and directing, mm -hmm. he ran out of ideas. Okay. So, so then I had to take who over. In? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so then you. I had to step in and be like, "All right, right. I've seen a bunch of these movies. I know how this is going to go down. Sure. You're going to go here. You're going to go there. You're going to pop out of here." And so then <laughs> we just, I just started improvising. Nice. And I noticed that. That came real natural to me. Like, you put mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. in a spot, you know, no script, no crew, no nothing. Yeah. I thrive in that, you know? Wow. Maybe okay. you give me a script, you give me a crew, you give me all this. I Maybe I stumble, fall on my face, you know? Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe but, not, you know? Uh, yeah, so we shot this little thing. Mm -hmm. I went home. I had no idea what this is going to turn out like because I'm just... I'm just shooting. I'm just... Right. You I shot have, a lot I of have, footage. Yeah, because I have some experience editing, right? So okay. I'm shooting this thing, and I know how I can edit it. So I'm in my head. I'm piecing it together, but I don't know later how is it really going to look when I cut it all together. They made it seem like they made the movie. <laughs> when they talked to right, people... Right, because they, were, like, they yeah, were in it. So they're in it. So yeah, yeah. They're, that's what people assume. They made the movie. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, we have a guy who works the camera, and yeah, he cuts it together, but yeah. They, they get all the credit. And then you it. then you were like, okay, now, next film I make, I'm going to have credits at the end. <laughs> <laughs> right. So how, how what method of editing did you have at that time? At that time, my method of editing was um, it, I had a deck, mm -hmm. a professional deck that I could connect to my camera through this control wire called Link. And oh, yeah. you can do... <laughs> Yeah, you can do A, B, cut. Um, so I, okay. I, yeah, I'd have to like cue it up, you know, mm -hmm. cue both things up and play one, record with the other, and then stop, and then set up the next scene, and then over and over. Okay. Sort of like what I did in camera, but now I don't have to do it in camera. I could do it between a camera and a deck. And right, you, you, that was hard. That was, oh, I'm sure very was. hard, very tedious, long hours, because, you know, you have to go that whole process without being able to preview it mm -hmm. you know until you're mm -hmm. done 
then you go back and you look at it and it's like oh maybe something was off by like a frame or two a couple frames yeah and it doesn't work you know uh, you got to go back you got to do the whole thing right because it's it's old school linear yeah. editing and uh granted a little bit easier than having to do in camera but not by a whole lot. <laughs> a whole other headache, you know. Right. And then learning how to, so I had to get like a specific deck so I could insert audio, you know, like music. But we cut this thing Small together. Project. We weren't worried about copyright so at I that was, point in time. So I was, able to in, I was able to insert like little sound effects, like when the machete went <laughs> through him, you know, okay. and things like this um, so you with, could, with you, this you deck. Could, you could edit. I could audio. Do, you I could, could insert, insert video. I could insert audio. I could do okay. a whole separate track for the audio. Right. And okay. so I was able to do this, and with that, and a little cheap title maker, you know, in between. Oh, really? Okay, that you could. <laughs> yeah. So I could add in. some titles to it. Right. I was right. able to cut together these little guerrilla short films, you know. Right. And when you, when you watch it after you finish cutting it together. Mm -hmm. It looks like wow! It it came it came together. It actually worked, you know. Yeah. You know, and then when you add the sound effects, it's like oh, that really, that right. really sounded good. So then you add the sound effects of the music. Mm -hmm. Right. And it background just, music. Uh -huh. Yeah, it just ties it all together. It's like magic. Yeah. Yeah. It know? is. Okay. So you were really getting the. So the then I would give directing and editing bug at that point. So then I would give a copy of this to Benny. I would give a copy of it to Chavito. Right. And yeah. these guys, they knew everybody. Right. Okay. So they were your distribution they, system. Man, <laughs> they would go house to house and show it to whole housefuls of people, mm -hmm. you know. And before I knew it, I had a following, you know. I had a little following. Sure. <laughs> So then from that, you know, I, I made another movie and I actually got a Patreon, you know, because Benny was working at this club. A patron. Patreon. Patreon. Okay. And, and yeah, he also became like a fan of, you know, what I was doing. Mm. And so. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So <laughs> he had a lot of people who were um, willing to do anything for him. Hmm. This guy, okay, like he he was, was his well crew. liked by a uh, lot of no no not 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 like a gang or anything. okay 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 even though outside of his club there was like a little bit of a gang mm -hmm. affiliation that was selling drugs outside of his place mm -hmm. and these guys were really they were real motherfuckers and <laughs> right you know you um, you couldn't cross these guys and even yeah. Louis knew like okay. I can't tell them not to sell drugs outside of my place. Mm. The only thing he could tell them was like, don't bring that inside of my establishment. Okay. He had to make a compromise with them. Right. But the fact that they even made a compromise with him mm -hmm. says what kind of uh, level of respect people had for him, you know? Wow, okay. And so when he came on board, you know, now I had a bar. Okay, no. you had a bar to use as to use a any which way I want. It was a little location. location. Yeah. Yeah. Now he knows who's Jr. <laughs> so the next nice. movie, I shot it there. The next movie was called Venganza, and uh, I shot it there. Venganza. I used, I used a lot of his people. They <laughs> jumped in on the movie as as uh, actors or crew or both. Both. Nice. You know, nice. So if my if I mean if. I have a crew, right? But if you're gonna be in my movie, mm -hmm. you're standing around. Yeah, you know, you're gonna be, you're you gonna know. be moving lights or placing sandbags yeah, I'll be like, or you, something. Grab that over there, and <laughs> as far as I could trust you, right? Because if I felt like you're gonna mess well, yeah. up my light, uh, then you know, stay away from my light. You stay yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, yeah, and so then I shot, uh, you know, Venganza. Then I went. What was that about? Venganza, mm -hmm. Venganza means revenge. Okay. And like vengeance. So basically, but, yeah, the okay. premise of my movie is that uh, someone frames uh, a mute guy. This 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 is a guy. Benny plays a, a mute guy in the movie who is the son of a santera. Okay. That does santeria. Oh, uh, a practitioner of the religion of santeria. santeria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And supposedly they have a lot of you know, mystical powers, you know, 
Hmm. They have, uh, they can, you know, have premonitions. They can, you know, different di different things. You so know? there was a supernatural element they to this. They can cast uh, spells, uh, you know. Yeah. Right. Okay. And so I use that to give like a more body of spin to Halloween or, you know, Friday the 13th kind of theme uh, somebody, where somebody's uh, wrongfully killed and then they're brought back to life for one night of revenge. Was this... Your this plot, your idea? Yeah, I completely just improvised it. You oh, know? Okay, okay. So, so we, you didn't script it so out. Benny, they want to talk in the movies, right? So I said, okay, <laughs> okay. we're gonna make you a mute. <laughs> oh, okay. So now, now that makes he's sense. talking like this in the movies now. You no, know? really? <laughs> well, and so not quite mom, mute, but so his mom okay. is a Santera, mm -hmm. you know, and. Mm -hmm. Then this other guy, Jose, he's a character. So I was like, all right, I got a good part for you. Um, uh, so I made him the villain in this thing. And uh -huh. there was another girl who also worked for Louis. You know, it was pretty, you know, and I figured, okay, she could be like uh, the, the victim in this thing that sets everything going, you know? So okay. Jose, like, murders like, her. like the girl. He oh, meets she gets her. murdered. Okay. He meets with her at the cemetery. <laughs> uh, did y'all except... shoot in the graveyard? Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. But this is right on like the night before Halloween or Halloween night. New, uh, mischief, mischief Eve is the night before Halloween, uh, okay. and it, this whole murder thing goes down. Mm -hmm. So he comes to the bar and everybody's at the bar and he's looking all depressed. Hey, was, hey, why are you so depressed? What's wrong? And then they get a call. Oh, they found so and so at the graveyard, murdered. Wow. You know. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And he goes, did, "Did anybody see who did it?" And so somebody <laughs> uh, says, uh -huh. oh, "They don't know. They just know that uh, somebody spotted this birth to a guy leaving the scene." Oh. So he was hanging around. So when the cops showed up, you Did know, see a suspect somebody, at first. So now, Berto, I mean, Jose now is thinking, okay, I'm going to exact revenge. I'm going to go after... He gets everybody convinced that Berto did it. Mm. So they mm -hmm. have this whole witch hunt. They go out to the graveyard, because that's where he hangs out, right? Okay. Like, I don't have anything bad to do. Sure, go not? hang out there. You know, it's quiet. And so <laughs> they hunt him down, and they shoot, and they kill him. Oh, Okay. So his mother is kind sleeping. She wakes in her sleep. She actually saw this in her sleep. She had a premonition. Oh, because she, she's a... Uh, she's a Santera. Santera. Mm -hmm. So then she goes and she casts a spell to bring her son back to life for one night of revenge. Ooh. So it kind of turns into a zombie movie, sort of. Yeah, some, something like that. Well, the yeah. undead, oh, whatever. All right. And so that, that yeah, so that's the movie. Uh, Wow. Uh, completely improvised. <laughs> I started to write. So that's the first time, like, I started to write, like, uh, mm. somewhat of a script. Right. Because you had an... Let's you, call it a treatment. You, Let's call it a it's treatment. It's a treatment. Okay. Right. <laughs> right? Treatment, an outline and had, of what was going to happen. And I had lines for people, you know? I spent time, and I had okay. my wife helped me with this, and we actually, you know, had the lines for people... Right. to go it's and memorize their lines and come back and it was semi scripted then for sure yeah okay. so i did that for one scene so i met with everybody and i gave them their lines and told them to memorize them mm -hmm. and they came back the next day i asked them if they memorized their lines they're like oh i lost that paper <laughs> <laughs> my dog ate it what well, turns out <laughs> oh okay so yeah they had, to, they had to be fed their lines then. so i had to feed them their lines for them. Right. And that's what I did, and I learned to shoot my movies in that way. So everything just came off the top of the nugget there, what felt that's right. That's pretty you smart. Know? It's like you... Say it in your own words, you know? You reinvented... Uh, I didn't reinvent uh, nothing, uh, just <laughs> came up with my, my own... Where you feed a line... ...way of doing that, things. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, uh, so we're going to conclude our podcast with, uh, with that for now, but... This is an example of what the One Man Band podcast is going to be. Right. I'm basically going to be this. We're going to have discussions here. Yeah. About what we're working on, um, and we touched on that briefly. So yeah. well, I found this conversation a lot of fun, and I, I hope uh, whoever's watching this uh, found it interesting as well. And uh, maybe we'll go to your 
Patreon page and become a patron of yours. Anyone out there who wants to support me, uh, they can go to my Patreon page and they can uh, uh, donate uh, $5 a month, $10 a month, $25 a month. And if you're El Rey, I have a tier for that and that's a $50 tier and we will be singing your praises. And so so uh, how can they find your Patreon page? They go to patreon.com and then- Yeah, there's they... gonna be a link on this page. Catch us on our next uh, podcast. And until then, have a nice day.